let's uh, bring the guest on right now. You know him from that masterpiece of a movie, Godfather 1. Gianni Russo played Carlo in that movie and ends up with one of the most iconic pieces of cinema ever filmed. Welcome, Gianni. Thank you for having me, man. I really appreciate it. You're more than just an actor. You have quite the portfolio. You're a singer. You're an author. You are a restaurateur. You have your own wine. You're a producer. You've got a lot of things going. And let's start with this. First of all, you're the first guest I've ever had, Gianni, who's killed somebody. So I can check that box on my repertoire. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's I, in your book. I've had a couple of experiences with that, unfortunately. And they deserved it, I hope. And you never went to prison for that, right? Oh, no. It was all self-defense, number one. Uh, the first one was a pedophile. And then the second one was an underboss to Pablo Escobar, Lorenzo Morales. And that happened in my nightclub in Vegas in front of 150 people. I actually went to a woman's rescue. It was, she was his date. And he broke a crystal bottle and stuck it in her face. And, um, and Steve Sharippa from The Sopranos and now Blue Bloods was my doorman. He was going to school at UNLV. And I used to hire a lot of the college kids. Plus, he was a big guy. And put him in a tuxedo. And he just froze. And I called him. I said, get to table seven. He said, I ain't going over there, boss. This guy's nuts. I said, well, thanks. That's what I hired you for. <laughs> So you so stepped in a, and and you, you shot him? Well, he slit my he went for my throat, missed, and he cut me a hundred, I mean eighty something stitches under my neck. So that that gave me the okay. And I shot him. I shot him right between the eyes, actually. Wow, that poor neck of yours after Clemenza garroted you, that I had know. to be a little tender. Been really abused, this neck. <laughs> okay, let's let's talk about first of all, Francis Ford. Coppola is re-releasing Godfather 3. He's re-edited it, and that's coming out next month. Your thoughts on Godfather 3? Well, it definitely needed to be re-edited, so I'm, wow. I'm anxious to see it. because I, yeah, I, Not a lot of love for that movie. Not, not just me. So many people. I just, I don't know what happened. It just fell apart. But, you know, when you, you have a trilogy with... And the leading is Godfather 1 and 2. I think Godfather 2 was better than 1. So I thought 3 was going to be amazing. And it just fell apart. Well, you're coming off two masterpieces. And to get a third masterpiece in the same genre, well, it didn't happen. So we'll right. see how the re-edited version looks. But let's go to your part in Godfather 1 as Carlo and... Here you are, kicking out the windshield. All I can show of that is this little photo here. And isn't that your check scene, Gianni? Isn't that what yeah. you have in your checks, that, that foot coming out the windshield? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How many takes to do that? that? That actually was about six takes, which but we choreographed it right up to my foot going through the window. And that was a very dangerous thing I found out later because once my foot went through the window and the, the camera was mounted on the hood of the car, no one realized I had to get my leg back in and drag it over all that glass. My was leg, that, that, like, that wasn't real glass, was it? Oh, it had to be because he tried the breakaway glass and it just broke. So they scored a regular windshield so that I could cr crack it. And uh, no, that was a real glass window, you know, but. Uh, oh, okay, so how do they garrote you? How, what's the movie magic? How do they do that? Because it looks pretty real in the movie. But you know, that's the easiest thing. When I tell you how it was done, you're gonna say, wow, I didn't think of that. All I had to do once he put the garrote around my neck and started pulling me, I, my feet were on the floorboard of the car. I just pushed myself up with it. That was the easy part. Getting through the window, because you're facing the roof of the car, I actually hit the stunt driver one time and knocked him out with my shoe. So, you know, <laughs> when you're not looking and you're just trying to 
scramble like a fish on the end of a line. You don't have great direction when you're looking at a Plymouth roof in front of your face. But uh, the scene worked, fortunately. Yeah, it worked very well. When you were doing the movie, did you have a feeling that you were going to be part of a masterpiece or did that not happen until you first saw it? What was that moment when you said, wow, this thing is classic? To me, you know, I was 26 years of age. I always wanted to be an actor. And that was my first film. I never did anything prior to that. So me, it was an ego trip. I was very financially secure already. But I just wanted that notch on my gun. And I was able to work it out with the unions and solved a lot of problems for them. And there I was making a, a, a film debut in a movie that, you know, is critically acclaimed throughout the world. And the 50th anniversary is coming up in 2022. So it's, uh, what, what was your life after the movie comes out? Uh, you're now part of this incredible movie things start coming to you or was it not that was it just kind of well okay i had a part in this movie and now i just got to keep going how do you follow that up well i really didn't you know fortunately a lot of young directors and people like that came to me and i, I wound up doing 46 motion pictures and some of them became classics like sea biscuit uh, any given sunday family man strip tease with Demi Moore. I've done some big movies and I still don't consider myself an actor. And the funniest thing now I'm doing the biggest project I could ever do. They turned my book, Hollywood Godfather into a 10 hour mini series. And Nick Vallelongo, who won two Oscars in 2018 for green book. He's, he's a, a producer on it along with Jules Nasso who's been a friend of mine. I did Out for Justice, one of his uh, Steven Seagal series. So it's uh, it's been a great ride. You know, I, I hate to say that to most struggling actors because I went into the business not needing money, and I think that gave me an easier threshold than trying to take bit parts here and there. I don't know if I would have ever been an actor at all. There was something that I read that said when you were being beaten up by the James Conn character, Sonny, in the movie, that he actually landed some blows when he's hitting you with the garbage can lid in that whole series, that little scene there. Is that true? Did he really get to you there? Well, he got, he got very jealous of me. I don't know why. Because, you know, he's a thespian. He's studied. And most of your audience is not going to know this. He was supposed to play Michael. But when Francis got hired to direct it, he saw Pacino in his first and only film, Panic in Needle Park, and he fought to get Pacino as Michael. So he was a little bit bitter already, Jimmy, because of his ego, and he got the smaller part, and obviously he was out of the movie in the beginning, or the middle, and uh, he took it out on me because he thought all these parts were being shuffled around because I was a total unknown. Even Brando tried to get me fired because he said, this guy's got to be so believable. But uh, fortunately, it worked. And uh, I actually got nominated in Cannes Film Festival as most promising newcomer, which they don't even have that category anymore. So it's been a right. great, great career. So he did get a few blows that landed. That garbage can lid really did hit you pretty hard. Well, we choreographed for a day, and then we went in the next day to shoot it just to set up the camera marks. But, you know, when he started banging me with that steel garbage pail cover, he chipped my elbow. And then I'm saying, like, what the hell? When I Because we choreographed when I crawled through the railing. As soon as he touches my chest, I reacted and rolled over. Well, this time he lifted me up, and he broke two ribs. And then I wind up in the fire hydrant and I'm laying there and I made a decision. I'll never do another fight scene in a movie. This is <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back a few years. In your book, you talk about losing your virginity to Marilyn Monroe. You were 16. She was 33. Was she a gentle lover or a, a naughty girl? 
Well, you know, Kitty. I, I could only experience after it. Prior to me, I couldn't believe, first of all, I was with Marilyn Monroe. I saw Some Like It Hot already 10 times before I met her. And I met her as a shampoo boy because I got caught on the streets of New York at 15, not realizing you had to stay in school until you're 16. So they sent me to a vocational school to be a hairdresser for six months. And as luck would have it, uh, Kenneth came in and needed shampoo boys for Lily Dashe. And the fourth head of hair, I washed Marilyn Monroe's hair. And then she started requesting me. And then it got a little deeper than that. And I sounds like it. Yeah, in more in more ways than one. And sure uh, <laughs> and I wound up being with her. In fact, I was with her the last three days of her life up in Calneva before uh, Bobby Kennedy took her out. Literally. Oh, so you're going with that? The the, the Kennedys did her in. Oh yeah, definitely. I knew oh, that. Okay. Oh, I know. Oh, okay. It's book. And okay, and first, funny, first, first you, you know, we, I, the book is out almost two years, and no Kennedy came to sue me yet. <laughs> in fact, Sunday is the 57th anniversary of Kennedy's assassination. I know. Yeah, you do, because <laughs> you, you have all those. I was the messenger uh, for that. Yeah. I wound up leaving yeah. the country for 22 months after that. But uh, th that broke my heart because I didn't know who the target was. And all those previous years, I was working for, you know, Frank Costello and then graduated up to other people. And I was babysitting Senator John F. Kennedy at the, at the uh, Sands Hotel in Vegas prior to him winning the election. But, you know, the, his father promised the mob that if you get my son in, the first duty would be the Bay of Pigs and bomb Cuba, and you'll get all your casinos back. That's the only reason they backed him. It was a win-win for everybody, but the mistake John made was to put Bobby in office as attorney general, and he didn't see eye to eye with that at all. In fact, he hated all his father and, bro and, and his brother's friends that were connected to the mob. And so I thought they were going to take Bobby out. I really thought all these little trips I was taking was to organize Bobby, but they took, as we all know, John out. One little thing on Marilyn Monroe, carpeting and drapes all match? Oh yeah. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> we have a, a theme on this Friday show, Gianni, it's a cocktail theme and you have your own wine, right? I have my own wine and I'm also the ambassador to Don Corleone Vodka. So that, that vodka is doing really well. Like you can buy that online in 42 states now. And it's from and, it's quadruple. And the state. olive oil, Jenko olive oil. Jenko olive oil. I have Clement. There's the olive oil. That's from Sicily, man. That's Barbera olive oil. And that's also online. And something for the audience that are Godfather fans, if they go on Cordelione, fine Italian foods, they could buy Clemenza's meat sauce in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like code to me. Clemenza's meat sauce in a jar. Right. When after Clemenza strangles you, you guys go out to dinner later that day and talk about it. And how does that work? What what's that atmosphere afterwards? Hey, nice take. Let's go get some lunch. Well, no, that 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 you know that didn't happen because we were so we were bombarded all the time. We had a his set was locked down set. And after 13 or 15 hours, I didn't want to go out with these guys to begin with. I want to go with a bunch of chicks and go back into New York. That was all on Staten Island. But all the all the thespians hung out together and do lines and talk about what they could have did and didn't do. I, I was never that guy. <laughs> it's like By doing lines, you mean going over the script or cocaine? No, a uh, strip. Strip. No, no, no. They were doing lines, that kind of lines. Or maybe they were. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. So you have a lot going on. You're locked down in New York City. But before that, you had a production going of the book, right? Yeah, I made a musical out of the book. And uh, fortunately, Tom Cantone, 
who's the entertainment director for all the Mohegan Sun casinos, which are eight now, soon to be 10. I opened Niagara Falls View, 1,500 people, very well received. I was on my way to Atlantic City at Resorts, which is one of their properties. And like you pointed out earlier, Friday the 13th, it closed down. And I've been grounded ever since because of that. But, um, you know, hopefully we'll get through this like we've done so many other tragedies. And I'll go back to work as a singer also. Yes, you also sing. Yeah. You're a crooner, right? You do Sinatra, Dean Martin. Well, Sinatra was my only singing teacher, which was a your great teacher. Thing. Yeah, you taught me how to sing. Marlon Brenda taught me how to act. And you already said that, you know, uh, Marlon Monroe took my virginity at 16. Gianni, where were your parents? Uh, what was going on there? A 16-year-old doing hair. Where were the parents? What happened was, you know, I got very bitter when uh, nine, uh, August 7th, 1949, I was six and a half years of age, and I, I, I was quarantined to Bellevue. I got polio, and nobody came to see me, which I couldn't understand. And it was really almost tragic for me because, like most of the kids in my ward, they were all depressed. They were dying, you know, a kid or two a day. A day. And I'm saying, where are my mother and father? Why did they do this to me? And I didn't see them for five years. So when I got out, I didn't go home. And fortunately, Frank Costello took me under his wing because I don't know where I would have went in, in as far as my, my bitterness and, and my, my, I just was angry. So uh, I never went back home. I did take care of my family, but I never wanted to be a part of them anymore. And thank God I didn't have to be. And I, I've moved on. And now I have 11 kids of my own, 10 grandsons. It's like insane. And you haven't been married in almost 30 years. You got all those 11 in prior to 30 years ago. No, not 30 years. I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm right now. Yeah, you said 92. You told me before the show. Yeah, Nine, that's almost 30 years ago, my yeah, brother. I, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> There it is, almost 30 yeah, years. My oldest older son is 58, so it's crazy. All right. Well, Gianni, I wish you continued success with everything. And let me just end with this. Tataglia or Barzini? It was Barzini. <laughs> it was Barzini, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, here's the envelope with no airplane ticket in it. You're going to Vegas. Your punishment is you're out of the family business, my brother. You know how funny that is? Because now I'm a part of their business, and then <laughs> how life works, huh? Yep. Have a great Thanksgiving, Gianni. Always Thank a pleasure. Thank you, and all your audience also. God bless and stay safe. Thank you, That's Gianni it. Russo. How about that for a career and life?